Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up in the news this week, I describe the Covid University experience, a thermonuclear explosion, I explain where I've been, Germany, and I get confused. Uh... Starting off the news this week, you've probably heard of a supernova. Now we've discovered a micronova in a study published this week in the journal Nature. In the middle, there are nova with no super or micro, and these astronomical events are usually caused by interactions between white dwarf stars and a much larger partner star in a close binary star system, that being a solar system with two stars. The white dwarf effectively pulls material from the larger star into itself, causing a thermonuclear explosion when the hydrogen pulled from the companion star fuses with the helium on the white dwarf. A micronova is basically this, but on a much smaller scale, and therefore more specific parameters have to be met in order to allow such an explosion, though a much smaller one that only lasts a few hours to take place. Instead of happening across the whole surface of the star, these micronovae happen at the magnetic poles of the star. Despite the colossal power of the micronova, it still has only a millionth of the power of a nova. In the paleontology news for this week is also a very intriguing paper describing the discovery of diverse melanosomes in pterosaur skin and pycnofibers. The paper explains how it's still controversial that feathers in dinosaurs and pycnofibers in pterosaurs are descended from the same ancestral structures, and that previously only very similar ovoid melanosomes had been seen in pterosaur pycnofibers, suggesting that they had quite limited colour variation. In this new study, however, a tape jared pterosaur from Brazil was analysed, with the researchers finding that it actually had a distinct group of different melanosomes in various regions in both the skin of the head crest and the nearby pycnofibers. This has therefore led them to suggest that pterosaurs were also utilising their pycnofibers which they interpret as being homologous with feathers in visual displays, meaning that feathers being used for display purposes had an ancient evolutionary origin. There's been more pterosaur news this week too, as another paper has analysed the capability of pterosaurs in taking off from water. A quadrupedal water launch strategy, unlike the bipedal launch of birds, has been proposed in larger pterosaurs, but a quad launch has never been demonstrated before in smaller members of the group. Examining a specimen of pterosaur from the Solenhofen limestone in Germany that preserves soft tissue structures, the paper performed calculations to determine the feasibility of quadrupedal launch in these animals, finding that it was indeed possible. Additionally, the specimen even preserves webbing between the toes of this pterosaur, an anatomical feature that would have aided in a water launch according to these calculations. And finally, we welcome a new genus of dinosaur this week. Mype macrothorax. This dinosaur has been classified as a member of the enigmatic Megaraptoridae and is known from a fair amount of material recovered from the latest Cretaceous rocks in Argentina. The new dinosaur is notable for having a particularly wide and deep thoracic cavity, which is reflected in its name, with a width of over 1.2 metres. Thanks to its relatively complete skeleton, it's now the most informative Megaraptorid from this time in the Cretaceous and has been found to group together with the other South American Megaraptorids in their own clade, while Australian and Asian Megaraptorids seem to be stem groups. So, a really amazing discovery that's helping to clear up the internal relationships of this dinosaur group. Uh, anyway, so, so that's it this week. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this week's 7 Days of Science and all the science that Ben and I have offered you this week. Um, and we'll see you next week for next week's 7 Days of Science. And that's happening next week.